Over the last eight years, I've helped people launch their careers in property developing. Every kitchen needs it. I think you should take the topical fish tank out. To turn the bath on, you're going to have to come along like this. Turn the taps on like this. Very elegant. It's going to be hard to sell a family home for £900,000, nearly a million pounds. It's going to be aimed at a young family with a couple of children, possibly three, on the age of about two to seven. So if they're eight, you still that, let them? I, 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 I would let them, yeah. You went to buy a house that you hadn't seen and you had and you hadn't had a survey done. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that bath there. The house is going to look absolutely fantastic and if Sarah doesn't like it, then she clearly has no taste at all. Even when they didn't make the wisest of decisions, a rising market saved them from financial ruin. You'd make £110,000 profit. That is very good. That's, that's worthwhile. <laughs> you have been in a rising market. £83,000 profit. Wow. <laughs> I kind of need that kind of figure, I'll be honest. <laughs> Two years ago, when house prices were at their peak, 14 families set out to make their fortune from bricks and mortar. <laughs> I would really question whether selling this house is going to be made easier with that. <laughs> this is great. See, I think we should cover the whole house in this. It's going to feel like it's a great pad in the West End of London, right in the heart of Broadstairs. But little did they know the boom they were banking on was about to turn to bust. Everything went from fabulous to rock bottom overnight. We've never done anything with property before, and when we decide to, guess what? Let's have a crisis in the property market. <laughs> it was a real shock when everything started falling down around our ears. We assumed that house prices would just go up. We just had no idea that they would ever go down. That's it, it's finished. I don't think it'll ever come back. Over the next few weeks, I'll be following these family stories as they try to navigate their way through one of the biggest and fastest financial meltdowns in living memory. It's the peak of the market and tonight's developers are on the crest of a wave. Every confidence going, we can make a thorough success of this. So do you have somewhere that you're aiming to be financially in the next couple of years? Uh, a couple of million in the next few years would be absolutely wonderful. Talk of subdued lending and cooling house prices doesn't matter when you have the bank of mum and dad. You needed some money, so you rang your parents. <laughs> <laughs> so your mum sold the home and gave you all the money. Yes. Brilliant mum. <laughs> <laughs> In Leatherhead, Surrey, meet would-be developer Natasha Burr. She lives at home with her mum, Debbie. At the tender age of 21, she's already made £100,000 developing a family house. I, I've dreamt or thought about being a property developer since I was at least 14. I, I always used to want to be a pilot. <laughs> And then I started getting into property and like I'd always enjoyed drawing floor plans. Even when I was at school I thought about it. It's just what I'm doing and I don't really think anything of it. Natasha's jacked in her job as an estate agent so she can develop full time. And this is what she's taken on. A scruffy and uninspiring two-bed bungalow with an enormous 200-foot garden. Natasha plans to extend into a three-bedroom house in just ten weeks. It's a seriously ambitious schedule, but Natasha is a seriously ambitious young woman. How are you financing this? I mean, you bought this for 330000 It's a lot of money to find at 21. Well, basically, uh, my mum and I sold the family home uh, last year, moved ourselves into a rented house, and she gave me all the equity to use. Hang on a minute. So your mum sold her home and gave you all the money? Yes. Brilliant, Mum! <laughs> <laughs> well, I like to be behind her in whatever she chooses to do, and I knew that this was something that she desperately wanted to do. So are you involved in this project at all? Um, no, no, not, Natasha has the sole responsibility. I leave it entirely to her. So why have you decided to develop? Well, I have to say my biggest inspiration was you. 
Uh, <laughs> I've been watching you since I was about 14 on the television and I just decided that's what I was going to do. Gosh. So I am. That's a, that's a bit scary. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean in a bad it. way, it's all positive. <laughs> It's only a few weeks since Natasha bought her bungalow and the approaching downturn in the market will really test her skills as a developer. And looking at Natasha's figures, she might struggle. She paid £330,000 for the bungalow. Her £82,000 budget looks low and the £475,000 sale price seriously steep. Her target £63,000 profit could be in for a nasty squeeze. That does seem quite high for a resale figure. I think it's quite achievable bungalow. around here. I've got yeah. quite a lot of experience in the local area from being an estate agent. And yeah. I think it's quite viable. I'd have thought that it would be safer to work to 430, maybe 450. At 450, to... I'd be able to walk away and smile. But at 430, I'd probably bury myself in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> At the moment, Natasha's bungalow has two double bedrooms, one bathroom, one reception room, a skinny kitchen and a conservatory. The first part of Natasha's plan is to extend the entire back of the house to create a large kitchen breakfast room and lounge. Then she'll slice the bathroom in two and squeeze in an ensuite, but that means the family bathroom will be tiny. Even worse, the kitchen next door will end up a seriously undersized bedroom. This is going to be the bedroom in yes. here, isn't it? The third this bedroom. This will be third bedroom. This is the biggest problem with this development yes. because it's very small, isn't it? Let's be honest. And actually really too small to be a third bedroom. It's more of almost a study, really, isn't it? Well, there will be an additional foot, which means the overall dimensions will be 11 foot by 8 foot. It's still really a single. And it will always be a single. I don't think I can get around that. If I was you, I would be tempted to take it further out in this direction so that you, you took it right out to here. And if you gave yourself another sort of three or four feet mm -hmm. in this direction, you then could call it a double. Then what would happen to the kitchen breakfast room? Because it would be more limited in size. I personally would try and push it another maybe four or five feet because you've got the most tremendously long garden in it and That's you can afford it to true, go a bit further. true, but then I'll have to wait for my planning to come through and even for an extra foot I have to wait for seven weeks minimum. I just want to get underway with the project. I think Natasha might be missing a trick. The plot is certainly big enough to extend the house, and just another five feet would make enough room to create a spacious family bathroom and ensuite, as well as a third double bedroom. I'd also add a doorway between the two reception rooms and put the lounge into the lightest part of the house and the kitchen into the darker reception room next door. Bearing in mind you've got two living spaces, yep. but one half of one living space is very dark, whereas this is all going to be nice and light but the back half of that room will be quite dark and, and a dark area is the best place to have kitchen units because you have under But the hub quality. of the home, I think, these days is the kitchen breakfast gym and I want that room to be the wow factor. Right. You're really certain about this, aren't you? Ah, uh, yes. I've given it a lot of thought. <laughs> I can see it won't be easy getting Natasha to change her ideas. She's in such a hurry to succeed, I'm worried she's not taking the time to think the project through properly. Sixteen miles away in Battersea, South London, 29-year-old Rick Dickinson has roped in Mum Margaret and Dad Andy to help bankroll his first development. We have no knowledge of this area, so we're completely reliant on Richard's judgement, and um, we're just going with him on it. That's a big gamble with this large and very outdated four-bedroom house. For a first-time developer, it's an immensely difficult and risky project to make stack up. But Mum and Dad Dickinson have no fear. Every confidence going, we can make a thorough success of this. And the main success will be working together. And speaking to each other at the end of the project. You've been drinking, you two. <laughs> Rick's plan is to turn the property into a luxury family home, but the Battersea market is packed, with high-end concerns and competition is extremely fierce. So you needed some money, so you rang your parents. 
<laughs> Things never change, do they? <laughs> so how's it working? Who's putting in what money? They put it in 50% and then I'm putting in the other 50%. Mum and Dad may have put up half the money, but Rick's the one who's done the figures. They bought the property in December 2007 at the peak of the market for a toppy 690,000. The budget is just 87,000 pounds, but Rick hopes to sell for a massively inflated 950,000 pounds, making 173,000 pounds profit. And are you all agreed on these figures? Is no. This... No, no, they're not. No. So, do you not agree with the budget of 90,000 or the resale of 950? The, the resale. What figure do you think is realistic for a resale? 875 or 850, maybe. But it isn't just the resale price where there are problems. They've allowed just £50,000 for the entire refurbishment of the house. What's more, there's the small matter of having to meet the payments on the half a million pound mortgage they took out to fund this project. So the 50 includes your borrowing costs? No, we're not borrowing the money. We, oh, no, we are borrowing the money. Yeah, but, not um, the mortgage repayments. No, it doesn't. No, no, it, does, no. it does include the mortgage repayments. Oh, no, can't. It does can't. include three remortgage payments. <laughs> oh, God. I've done the budget. These two haven't, so don't listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 50,000 doesn't seem much for a big old so. house in this no, area. No, it's not. I have to say, your figures don't completely instill me with confidence we haven't touched on the plans yet. Yes. These days, more than ever, developments need thorough preparation. All I'm seeing is utter confusion. If I was mum and dad, I'd be very, very worried. In early 2008, credit is starting to crunch and lending for houses is tightening, but not from the bank of mum and dad. In Battersea, South London, Rick Dickinson has roped his parents into going halves on the £550,000 mortgage he's taken out to develop this four-bedroom house. But they can't seem to decide whether it'll be worth £850,000 or £950,000 when it's finished, or what's included in their £50,000 budget. I hope they're clearer about their ideas for the property. So what are your plans for the house then? I think it changes daily which way we're going to go. Open for discussions. Yeah. We all keep moment. changing our minds. Because obviously you've got one house, so you've got to do yeah. one thing with it. Yeah, that's Mum's idea, that's what we have to do. <laughs> right, <laughs> OK. This house has major layout problems and needs to be completely reworked. Spread over three storeys, on the top floor there's one pokey loft bedroom, a tiny bathroom and a pint-sized kitchen. The plan so far is to rejig these rear two rooms to create a study and larger bathroom. Apart from a quick refurb, that's all they're planning on doing with the entire property. The trouble is, that will leave a first floor with three bedrooms and WC, but not one single bathroom. And a ground floor with two reception rooms, an undersized kitchen and a rear bathroom that no one will use. I think they've totally underestimated what they need to do to sell for more than they bought for, let alone get the 950,000 Rick wants. If you spend the amount that you're thinking of spending and doing what you're planning on doing, I think that 800 is probably your more realistic resale for this, which would give you a 20,000 pound profit. I mean, would that make it worthwhile, that amount of money? No, no, no. 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 I would, I would just start right from scratch with the plans. Mm -hmm. I think there are three crucial things that this property in this area needs to stand a chance of competing for the dwindling number of top-end buyers. First off, I would extend the kitchen to the side and create that ever-popular open-plan kitchen diner. Secondly, a first-floor bathroom is a must and the middle room is the most convenient spot to have one. Lastly, for families, it would be a major bonus to have a third and fourth bedroom upstairs. But to really cash in, I'd extend into the roof, making one of them a superb master suite. These improvements will add £80,000 to the budget, but I think they'll push a realistic sale price up by £120,000 and in this toughening market make the property much easier to shift. The big I, worry I is the, the increase in the budget. But if you swallow that and you accept that, then I think you could do OK out of this. Yeah, I think we're going to sit down, we're going to look at it all. And, we'll rejig um, it again. Yeah. Um, take I think on that, board what you've said today. Yeah, take on board. A lot board. of it makes sense. Yeah, and we've got to get some more quotes in, look at the figures. I mean, a lot of, I think, in my understanding, a lot of the work we can get along with while we're still f making final decisions. 
But it's not just Rick's money at stake here, and if I were mum and dad, I'd be keeping a very close eye on their investment. So who's going to be doing what? Who's project managing this? On a day-to-day -day basis, Rick is. But we'll be heavily involved with we it, will. and we'll be consultations all the time about it. And you're in charge of the budget as well, are you? Uh, well, I guess so, because... Well, no, I don't we'll think have, so. Well, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> now, that's going to be a mutual consent. Yeah, I yeah. think we have to be looking at um, things very carefully and keeping a close eye, uh, because the... otherwise, you know, things could run away mm. and... I think... Uh, uh, very quickly particularly him without control. money. <laughs> In Leatherhead, Surrey, it's week one of Natasha Burr's 10-week development. Work has started on digging the foundations for the new rear extension, but not before Natasha's had a big rethink of her plans. I'm not challenged very often with my thoughts, and she did challenge it, and it, yeah, it was hard to swallow, but she's, she's right. I'm doing most of her things. The bedroom's getting bigger, the lounge has moved, the kitchen moved, but I didn't go back to planning. Changing plans partway through is a fear for developers, but Natasha should go back and apply for permission to build a larger rear extension. It will cost her three grand in mortgage payments, but it's only a six to eight week delay, and I think it might give her a chance of getting the £475,000 she's looking for. You are treading a very difficult line, yeah. because if this was going to be a disaster, there'd be no question you had to go back to yeah. planning. But what you're ending up with is a fine size third bedroom but not massive and a fine size sitting room but not massive and the resale figure you're looking for is spectacular and be that a spectacular extra, house well well that extra <laughs> little bit of space that you would have got from going back I to planning would have your made angle, it spectacular but i have what i have i've got to make the best of the space i've got and i think the layout that i have at present is going to work fine. You know, I wanted to push on with it, and I think, I think it's going to work out all right. It does seem to me that you are quite impulsive and, and impatient, and kind of all guns blazing, jump on in yeah, there. No, it's fair to say that I am an impatient person, but I think my impatience is what particularly drives me, and I think if I wasn't impatient in my world, I probably wouldn't be where I am today. Natasha doesn't seem to realise it, but where she is, is taking quite a risk with her mother's money. Half an hour away in Battersea, it's week one of the Dickinson's three-month build. But there's only a few small jobs happening on site, because when it comes to plans, they can't seem to agree on much. First, it's the size of the loft. If we could take the wall back this way, the right to full width, yeah. then we'll have a superb room. Well, I think we really have to perhaps go further out than that. And then it's the side extension. As I was trying to show you ten times about the picture I've taken... Don't be so arrogant, Richard. I'm not being arrogant, I'm just saying, I've, you're not listening to me on I know, this but subject. You're, yes. Even the fireplaces are causing disagreements. Oh, no, no, I told you to ask Billy to bring the fireplace down. Yeah. And that one, Richard, that yeah. was exactly... And you also asked me to talk to No, no, I didn't, I didn't, Richard. OK. This really can't go on. Fortunately, it doesn't. In a miraculous turnaround, Rick, Mum and Dad suddenly decide to go with all of the things I suggested, from the loft conversion to extending the kitchen into the side return. They increase the budget to 157,000 and double the schedule to six months. But there's a wait for planning and with the unstable market, panic sets in. You have a for sale board outside. Very observant of you. Well, thank you. Right, Tam, talk me through what, what's the plan behind selling it. Is uh, this finished? We just thought if we could sell now at a lower price but keep the same profit margin, why not? How much are you trying to sell it for? Well, we put a starting price of 800 So you bought it for 690000 when the market was higher than it is now, you've ripped out the fireplaces and carpets and now you've put it on the market at £110,000 more. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, we... It's genius. It is. <laughs> Everybody should do it. But it's a building site, let's be yes. honest. Yes, okay. exactly. To some people, yeah. it appeal to some people. But we're under no illusions. I don't think any of us are expecting anyone to walk through the door and go, fantastic, I'll buy it for 800 But if it gets somebody else who might be interested in it a bit down the road, then it's opening it up to them as well. Well, I've been around this over all sorts of different markets. Flat markets, dipping markets, rising markets, this kind of house and this sort of area. And to buy it, modernise it, and then put it fresh back on the market with a big bang... 
has always been the most effective way of getting the best possible money for it. I would go along with that. I agree with her. In Leatherhead, it couldn't be more different as 21-year-old Natasha is taking the full weight of the project on her young shoulders. So it will be weatherproof within a week and a half? Two weeks, I'd say two weeks. Week and a half? Two weeks. <laughs> Mum Debbie has sold the family home to bankroll this development. I'm sure people must think I'm crazy to have done this, but I have every confidence in Natasha. She feels very responsible for uh, the situation. Yeah, she's the one that loses sleep, I don't. She's 30 more metres, OK. I'm hoping she'll give me my, some money back so I can buy a new car. <laughs> Now three weeks in, Natasha's eager to hit her ambitious ten-week schedule. But there's a problem. She's forgotten to tell the builders that she's changed her plans. I turned up on site and I have a wall, which, you know, the builders did exactly as the plan stated, so, I mean, credit to them for getting onto it so quickly. I just didn't think, <laughs> think fast enough. Unless it's absolutely vital, the wall's staying. <laughs> In a modern family home, it's a good selling point to have a flow between the kitchen and living areas. I'm back to show Natasha that with the wall blocking the flow of rooms, this layout suffers. So this is a sitting room. Yep. And, uh, and then you'll go outside here into a courtyard. And then this is going to be the breakfast area with the wall gone, and that will be the kitchen yep. there. If you go into the sitting room there, and you imagine that I'm, you know, the mum or dad in here, and you're the kids in there, <laughs> and trying to talk to you is a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Would you like a drink? <laughs> no, I'm all right. Would you like some supper? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it's Point my... taken. <laughs> Actually, in terms of a family space, it's really rubbish, isn't it? I wouldn't go as far as to say rubbish. <laughs> it would be better with a doorway there, though. The better it works mm -hmm. for your prospective market, then the more you can ask. So you will get more, and a lot more than the cost of putting a doorway. So a door it is. A door it is. In Battersea, the good news is they've realised that you can no longer make an easy, fast buck in today's housing market. But the bad news is that progress is slow. Getting plans drawn up for the side return and loft conversion is taking much longer than the Dickinsons expected. They're already a month in and have achieved very little. What's happening is we've been told it'll be a week and then it's two to three weeks when they come through and then if we need to make a change, we get told it's a week but it's another two weeks so all the weeks keep adding up. Nobody will quote to do work without the drawings, you know. We're just waiting on those. It takes another month before they firm up the drawings and find a builder, but finally work begins. The first job is converting the shabby loft room into a master suite. It's costing them more, but it's money well spent. When it comes to the side return, however, they're cutting corners. We have considered fully glazing the back area, we've looked into the costs, and yeah, they do look great, the trifold doors, but at a minimum, you're looking at two grand for the doors alone. Um, so you can get the same effect with just normal French doors. The truth is, you can't. In this area, making this development stand out will mean opening up the entire back of the house. Like this property, a five minute drive away. It's a large structural job, but it's worth it. Yeah, it's a tricky one, weighing up the costs. I know it shouldn't all be about the costs, but it is. And the drawings, well, the calculations will be a grand. The steel work, extra steel work will be, say, another five or six hundred. The extra labour, I'd imagine, be at least two grand. And the doors will be anywhere up to nine. You could be looking at 15 to 20k just to get rid of a wall like that. I think it would be worth spending that to make the kitchen really spectacular. It's in the big scheme of things. I don't think you'd see that money back. You don't think you would? It is the law of diminishing returns, and we're saying, well, we're pouring more money in than we'll ever possibly conceivably get out of it, plus our time and work. Yeah, I mean... Uh, Sorry, I'm not a charity. I no. completely no. understand but, but, but that, but, but surely you, the, you we're don't... We're trying to get a return, uh, is what Sarah is trying yeah. to achieve yeah. for us. This yeah. is really what yeah. it's about. And yeah. if you're not a charity, and if you're not doing this for a bit of fun to occupy yes, your right. time, 
then surely you need to make a profit exactly. out of it. Yeah. You have bought a house with a lot of competition, a very similar houses, and you need to make it really great, not okay. If you spend this money and make the kitchen really spectacular, you'll get a lot more that, for it than if you didn't. Yes, we definitely will. Sure. We will actually follow it up. Yeah. And we will get in touch with the structural engineer and... Mm -hmm. Yes? With Margaret on side, it's not long before the Dickinsons are back on track. And a month later, with planning permission granted, work begins on the side return extension. We've been back to the structural engineer and we had um, the plans altered slightly. So that back wall will virtually be a glass wall. And I'm looking forward to it and I'm sure it'll be wonderful. So we are doing a lot more work on the property now. We're doing the loft and the side return, which is probably costing an extra 60k or so. Yeah, but we've enhanced the project by doing it. And uh, come the end day when we do move the property on, that'll be reflected in what we get for it. In Leatherhead, the economic storm clouds are starting to gather and are threatening Natasha's development dream. I realised that I'm going to go over budget, but I hadn't foreseen that the market was going to go as flat as it has. Sign of a slowdown in house prices. House prices set a new record. Prices nationally are now increasing by 18% a year. Over the last decade or so, we've seen house prices in the UK quite literally go through the roof. But what caused that boom, and what happens now that the bubble has burst? be the case that trying to get much more than three times your income to afford a property was very, very difficult. In the past few years, you've been able to borrow five, six, seven times your income. The usual rules just haven't applied. Easy Credit is what built the housing bubble to such a state that when it popped, it's popped so severely that it's brought down the entire economy with it. The most famous product was the Northern Rock Together Mortgage, which offers you 125% of the price of a house. That's a dangerous thing to do because, you know, you, you're already in negative equity from day one. Banks were very much chasing the quick profits in a similar way to the way that supermarkets have done, by piling the products high and selling them cheap. The issue for the banks wasn't whether this made long-term common sense, it was whether or not they could sell those loans on to investors, pension funds and so on. The trick was not to get left holding the bomb. As long as you could sell it on before it went wrong, you'd be fine. Property prices are not dependent on supply and demand of houses. It's about the supply and demand of credit. As long as there's easy money knocking around, house prices will rise. A number of independent forecasters were claiming doom was about to happen, and yet no one wanted to listen because no one wanted to believe that they could possibly lose money in their property. One of the indicators that things weren't right with the UK property market should have been that even while things were going up during 2006 and 2007, the number of homeowners in the United Kingdom actually fell. It wasn't first-time buyers that were driving the growth in house prices, it was people who already owned properties buying more houses. Without first-time buyers actually being able to get onto the ladder, you can't actually have recovery which is sustainable. So you need to have activity at the bottom end, the middle end and the top end. If you think that the average salary is, say, £25,000, the average house price is around £150,000, that means we have a ratio of six times income. When it falls to, say, four times income, it might be reasonable to say that the market had begun to bottom out. One saving grace in all this is that lower interest rates have made mortgages more affordable. And provided people hold on to their jobs, a lot of them are likely to be able to ride out the current cycle. The Dickinsons are well into this development in South London. So you're, you're, get, you're a big steal in today, wouldn't you? No, uh, it'll be in next week. Next week, right. Yeah, so it's tomorrow afternoon with the contract. They bought right at the peak of the market in 2007, and there's no sign of a change in direction in the falling markets. It's starting to take its toll. The, I wouldn't be surprised they're coming six to ten grand. Mm. You, you're hemorrhaging money on the mortgages. It's just finding that money every month. I, I don't think I would say that I'm finding this to be an enjoyable experience. Um, I would really like it to be over. I think we've done enough already and I think we should keep things as simple as possible. Yeah. It's probably been less stressful for me um, and probably more stressful for Mum because, you know, I'm on site every day. I get to see what's going on. I know how things work. I can be confident of it. 
Whereas if you're not on site every day and you're not here, you're 60 to 100 miles away, you know, there's loads of money piling into this and what's happening from it? Back in Leatherhead, Natasha Burr is nearly halfway through her schedule. At 21, she's a young girl in a big hurry. She wants it done as quickly as possible. It's this hard hat, it's weighed me down. We're progressing exceptionally well and I'm thoroughly pleased with the builders. But I don't want people, you know, slowing down and, you know, thinking they can relax. Otherwise, it will end up drifting on and on and on. Natasha's very impatient and uh, won't always listen to what I tell her. If I say two weeks, she think it'd be a week. If I say six weeks, she reckon it'd be four weeks. Take the concrete slab due to be laid in the lounge. Kevin, the builders, warned Natasha it's going to take longer to dry than she's hoping for. But surprise, surprise, she doesn't want to listen. I can see I'm going to end up having to wait a couple of weeks for the floor. Uh, well, I don't think it's a couple of weeks. I think I'm being very optimistic with your timings because the recommended drying time for screed is a millimetre a day and you've got 76 millimetres of screed to go down. Six days. So that's a minimum of two and a half months before you lay the floor. That doesn't fit in with my schedule at all. That kind of pushes it over by five weeks. Natasha's builder is planning to use the standard method of pouring a concrete floor. But there's a quicker solution for her that, as the market's looking increasingly volatile, could pay dividends. So what I'm suggesting is that you go back to what people used to do a long time ago, and that's just have a suspended floor, which is how the rest of the house is yep. constructed. It's, it's the same as this. You have joists across the floor. Then you put your insulation between the joists. Yep. You need to put a layer of plywood on top of the joists and then you lay the flooring on top of that. It's probably more expensive in terms of labour rather than materials. Cheaper than a mortgage repayment though. Yeah. The beauty of this is you don't have to wait two and a half months for the screed to dry. Yeah. You can build this flooring system tomorrow. Oh, that's fantastic. It means I'll be on deadline. <laughs> you will. Maybe I'll even get in on advance. My schedule. Yeah. Miss some patience back. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Natasha being Natasha gets straight onto it. I'm hardly out of the door before work on the time saving suspended floor begins. Sixteen miles away in Battersea, things are also starting to move forward for Rick, Mum and Dad. With the structural work in the loft complete, Rick gets the decorators in to start on the first and second floors. It's been a real fight to get this bunch to fulfil the potential of their development, but they're still cutting corners. Take these doors. When converting a loft, you have to ensure that all doors to exit the property are fire retardant. But Richard's solution is far from ideal. Why did you choose these particular doors? We chose those doors because the original doors were four panel Victorian doors. And so we wanted to get four panel as close to that as we could. How much were these? Um, 50 pounds each. I can't think of a nice way to put this, but, mm. but they do look quite cheap. I just think at 900 to 950,000 pounds, especially around this area, people are going to expect well. top end. But I've got an equally cost-effective solution, and thankfully the Dickinsons still have the original period doors, because with proper consultation, most councils will allow you to use a special fireproofing paint. This half is normal paint, and this half is intumescent paint. So you can see here that with the normal paint... Yeah, and it seems to catch fire itself, doesn't it? Exactly. Whereas with the intumescent paint, it just bubbles and the paint expands to form a barrier so that the, the flame can't get through to the wood behind it. At a cost of around £50 a door, it's no more expensive than the cheap wood effect fire doors the Dickinsons have installed. But the finish will be far superior, and in a development like this, that counts for a lot. 
would you consider changing the fire doors that you have used and upgrading them? We considered it before and we didn't. You wrote it off. So... We were unsure that the fire officer would necessarily sign, sign it off. I have done this on lots of houses in yeah. Wandsworth. So I've spoken to them before. I think you need to do something. I think it's great. We chose not to use it. Somebody came round and, and said they like this house, but the doors are rubbish. Well, you know... But you we... know as well as I do, that's not what people do. Is they don't come yeah. round and go, fabulous house, I'll pay a million pounds. The door is the reason I'm not going to do it. No one in the whole well, history of the it. universe has ever done that. And They'll just the look at it well. and say, this is a bit shabby around the edges, I'll buy the one down the street. Okay. Okay. So that's yeah. a valid We're point, a very well. valid yes. point. We're considering what you've said, and uh, okay. I'm sure there'll be lots of discussions about them later on. Since Natasha began her development at the beginning of 2008, the price of property has started to fall. Uncertainty in the housing market means that a fifth of all mortgage products have been quietly withdrawn, including Abbey removing the last 100% mortgage. The number of houses selling is starting to go into free fall, and Natasha's original ambitions are looking impossible to achieve. Yes, the market has gone down, but I believe the house that I've created is something better than I actually anticipated. And therefore, I think it's, it's balancing out quite well, and certainly 465 to 475 should be achievable. I don't think she's got a hope in hell of selling for £475,000, even though she's worked flat out and her development is only three weeks over schedule. Bankrolled by Mum Debbie, Natasha's worked tirelessly to turn this bungalow into a modern three-bedroom home, and it works pretty well. The once dilapidated conservatory is now a bright and airy lounge overlooking the spectacular garden. Next door, the dark living room is a new kitchen diner with a simple, uncluttered design and a first-class finish. It's a real shame she didn't put a door between the kitchen and the sitting room, and a bit of a missed opportunity, not extending further into the enormous garden. I mean, it is a lovely room still, it's just that in this market particularly, which is quite a tricksy market, you kind of want to give yourself the best possible mm -hmm. opportunity you can, and having it that little bit bigger would have given you that just a tiny bit better chance of, of actually, you know, getting top whack for this. I think the room that we've been left with is a very good size, and it's like well in proportion with the rest of the rooms of the house. Natasha may not have wanted to extend even further back, but she did turn the third bedroom into a double, and that will certainly help push up the price of this bungalow. I think this was that pokey little kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> and you've now got a good-sized double bedroom, which opens up this bungalow to a completely different market. Yeah. Really. Having three double bedrooms rather than two it's double bedrooms single. and a tiny single. No, it's worked out Makes really well, this place. I'm pleased. <laughs> The shabby master bedroom has been updated and given a value-adding ensuite. And there's a further double bedroom and a great-sized family bathroom. There's no denying that what Natasha's achieved is impressive, but has it been enough to bring Mum Debbie the best return on her investment? Now, you bought this house for 330000 didn't you? Yes. And uh, you originally were hoping to spend 80000 refurbishing it. Correct. How much did you end up spending? It was 105000 So 25000 yeah. over. Since you bought this property, the market has been pretty flat. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea what it would now be worth in its finished condition? In an ideal world, we're looking at 475 if Natasha got the 475,000 she'd originally wanted, she'd make a 40,000 pound profit. I like this. Third double bedroom, probably the best thing I could have done. Wow. God, this really is something special. Cool to see it. The whole atmosphere that it creates is fabulous. I'm very impressed actually. I mean, I think it's been well thought through. It's very saleable. I would recommend uh, an asking price of 450,000 pounds. I would buy this property at 440,000 pounds. I would value this property at £430,000. 
We have had three agents in to value the property, though, and they came in at 430,000, 440,000 and 450,000, which would make between a £5,000 loss and a £15,000 profit. I have to say, I do think those um, figures are quite low. I've obviously been doing my own research throughout the development of the project, and I believe it is worth more than the figures that have been, have been said. And how do you feel about those figures? Well, hopefully we will improve on those figures. Time will tell. We think it's worth a, a little bit more. My personal gut feeling would be to put it on at just under the 450 mark, which you know, it will find its own natural level in the market. If lots of people want it, it will go up. But Natasha being Natasha puts it on at 475,000. And after four weeks, reality hits home and with no hope of a buyer anytime soon, she decides to rent it out. But in Battersea, Rick and Mum and Dad Dickinson have another six months to go in a falling market before their development will be finished. You've got houses that you think are worth X one month and then you go back in and really disappoint the owners because you're telling them a different figure the next month. It's October 2008, eight months after the Dickinsons started the modernisation of an enormous four-bed house in Battersea, South London. Their budget has increased from 87,000 to 176,000 pounds, but this has created a truly beautiful home. Properly extending into the loft has transformed an almost unusable space into a highly desirable master suite. Downstairs, the middle bedroom is a large and stylish family bathroom, something this house never had. Although the cheap fire doors they stuck with don't contribute to a high-end finish. On the ground floor, they ended up going all out for the kind of top-end kitchen diner that families in this area demand. That must be really tough, doing this development, whilst the market has been not just dropping, but crashing down. But you've ended up with a phenomenally lovely house. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. A universal yes. It's been a great team job. Great. And your input's been fantastic as well. But the truth is, it's all about figures. And this particular area has had an extra hit because it's on a direct feed up to the city in terms of public transport. And, and the immediate area is stuffed full of the people who have been hit hardest by the current economic the turmoil. And that economic turmoil has caused national house sales to go into free fall, despite the government pumping billions into the banking system. In Battersea, the number of houses sold has fallen by a massive 33%. A year ago, the Dickinsons dreamt of getting a profit of £103,000 by selling this house for £950,000. Now they need £866,000 just to break even. I would say in the last 18 months, prices around here have dropped by 25%. You've got houses that you think are worth X one month, and then you go back in and really disappoint the owners because you're telling them a different figure the next month. I value this house at £825,000. I would value this property at £800,000. In the current market, I think this house would sell for £750,000. We have had three agents in to value the property, and they've valued it at £750,000, £800,000 and 825000 Now, the average of those would make a £74,000 loss. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We feel it wouldn't be a consideration to sell the property at this moment in time. Plan B. Yeah, exactly. The value of the house is less than we'd like, but, you know, we're looking to the future. The only viable future is letting the property, but with upkeep and mortgage payments, the Dickinsons will need just under £3,000 a month to break even. As it was, your original plans would have got £2,600 a month, but with the side extension and the loft conversion, you'd get £3,200 for this. I think it's great, and I'm very pleased that, you know, we have done all the things that you know, we discussed with you initially, and uh, it really has made it a wonderful house. By maximising this property's potential, 
the Dickinsons will at least get some return on their investment, which is a huge saving grace. But do their family ties need saving as well? This was a family venture. Would you do another one? No. Why not? Because it's very difficult when there are three of you. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's always going to be the odd one. Who was that? That was me. Oh, was it? Yes. So, <laughs> did the boys gang up on you? Uh, yes. When I was dealing with Mum, I found it hilarious. Like, everything she's ever thrown at me, like, going, oh, why are you like this? Why are you like that? And I was thinking, this is where it all came from. <laughs> <laughs> the gene pool. Yeah. So you realise all your failings come from your mother? <laughs> Not all my failings. I've got a few. <laughs> yeah. And I but... found out how like his dad he is. <laughs> <laughs> With no sign of the market picking up any time soon, Rick decides to move into the development himself and rent out the other three bedrooms. I think the property was the right property. The price might not have been the right price. When we were buying, a lot of people were buying still very quickly. So you don't have time to go into a property, sit back, have a chat about it, see what you're going to do. It's like, right, if we don't make an offer, this will be gone. I've retrained as an electrician or a domestic installer, I should say. Um, so, you know, I can rewire houses, anything domestic I can do. I just cruise around London on my motorbike, rescue damsels who don't have any lights. So this development hasn't put me off developing at all. Um, I'm actively looking at ways of, you know, getting another project going. Meanwhile in Leatherhead, after 12 months of letting the property and the 475,000 asking price still unachievable, Natasha decides to move into the development with her mum. I think 475 is slightly ambitious. I obviously um, have a lot of heart and soul in this property and therefore believed it was worth 475. But I'm living in a beautiful house that I've created, paying a very small mortgage. I'm still very keen to make money out of property, but the market obviously is going to have a major factor in the time delay of making my million, but I will get there just with a, you know, a couple of years delay. With property prices falling, more and more developers are choosing to hang on to their properties, hoping that the market will bounce back. This is a very risky strategy, especially if you're banking on interest rates staying low. When interest rates do go up, more people will be unable to hang on to their properties and this surge of properties onto the market will tend to force the market down even further. Next week, developers set out to make a killing from flat conversions, just as that market came tumbling down. You're planning on turning this house into three flats for £60,000. Yeah. If we can do it, literally, your dog can do it. If you'd like any more information on this programme or would like to be on the next series, please log on to channel4.com slash homes George Clark tries his best, but a couple are not amused by his design for their house. See what happens in the Home Show Thursday at 8. Coming up, shop worker Barbara swaps the in-store announcements for some hard sell. She's running Sainsbury's next. <laughs>